Welcome to part two of my second year anniversary special. If you haven't seen the first part that discusses the evolution of my avatar Akemi, I highly recommend you do as there will be a link in the upper right corner for you to click on. The tone of this video is going to be much more sentimental than my other videos as well as a sneak peek behind the scenes in regards of what I've been dealing with and going through. Throughout my channel's journey and the tribulations I've overcome in the process, I've done a lot of back and forth in terms of content. What I should make, what appeals to my audience, as well as the almighty all-knowing algorithm. There's been many moments where I felt I needed to drop the gaming or drop the speed draws or turn around and focus on solely one or the other. Because if you diversify your channel and its content too much from what I've learned from the knowledgeable YouTube gurus out there, you end up splitting your audience and in the long run, it doesn't bode well for your channel's performance. Especially if the diversity in your channel doesn't seem to have parallels. Example, if you were a cooking channel, but also did pro sports wrestling reviews, the topics are too diverse. Basically on the opposite sides of the viewer spectrum, they end up clashing and it creates a rift in your audience who will most likely leave and find other channels that fit the niche of what they're into. I personally felt gaming and art go together a little hand in hand. My art was greatly influenced by games growing up. Pokemon for me, and I remember Legend of Zelda for my sister. <laughs> I, I still remember my sister would take the old Nintendo 64 guide for Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time and draw the official art of the characters or enemies. That style of game of storytelling and world greatly influenced her and her art. Later for me, Final Fantasy XII, introduced to me by my bestie, influenced the level of world building and storytelling I strive to achieve in my art. Games affected my art. And that aside, I know plenty of my inner circle of friends who are artists that also like to game. Even back in my college years, my surrounding classmates and friends at the time in my degree field were gamers and many liked to draw or create in some way. Overall, there's a level of creativity that applies when it comes to making games as well as art. And perhaps you could go as far as to say games are a type of art form that's interactive. I've used both games and art as a way to escape. With this in mind, it's probably why I believe creating a platform with both gaming and art would be successful. They felt similar to me, even though at the time I couldn't put into words of why. Yet, upon execution, I realized that according to factors like the algorithm, things like audience, it's just not the case. Not popular, if you will, or mainstream. And I say that as a means of what I feel is pure fact. Separately, gaming and art are their own mainstream pathways that to me feel like the paved roads of content. By being a paved road, there's much more traffic and opportunities, yet at the same time, all the different kinds of traffic can feel cluttered, if not overwhelming. In that regard, it can be hard to stand out. I didn't want to commit solely to gaming because I felt there were so many better gamers out there. And likewise, I didn't want to commit to art because I felt there's so many better artists out there. This darker perception of how I've rationalized my channel a year or so back affected me. I began to doubt, and I lost the main mission of why I even wanted to do YouTube. There's been quite a few times where I felt, this is it, I'm done. This is where I've peaked, now I've plateaued. After all, by combining both art and games, I ended up creating what I perceive as a deer trail instead of a main road. One, not many will notice it, and two, some will prefer the main convenience and hubbub of the main road than what I'm on. 
So as I continue to navigate my deer trail of a channel heading farther and farther away from the main road, as the leader, you can begin to feel a little lost. Looking over my shoulder, I notice the sprinkling of people who follow me as well as those who've turned around and left. Eventually, I started looking over my shoulder more than looking forward, and the pace of my channel slowed. I didn't just become lost physically in regards to my uploads, but mentally as I continued to question everything I was doing. In that state, YouTube as a platform felt soul-sucking and crushing. Being a content creator began to feel like joining in another rat race in a different kind of hustle culture. While I was out working a full-time job to pay my dues, there are hundreds, if not thousands of other creators who have more time than I, who are hungrier than I, who just have better numbers than I. It's the truth. It made me want to scream and throw it all away, be done with it, that my effort was being wasted like I was storing my content acorns in a tree that had a hole in the bottom. That every other creator around me was competition and if I wasn't doing my best to get ahead, I would be left behind. Because if you can't take the heat, then get out. Dog eat dog world and it just broke me. I didn't want to call it quits, but I lost the reason to keep trying. That the reason of doing it for myself because it's fun and I like to do it no longer was good enough anymore. If you noticed in February and March of this year, I only was able to create one video the whole month. I quite noticeably was very burnt out and decided to make the deliberate decision to take a step back and go to bi-weekly uploads until I hired on an editor. Lo and behold, early April rolls around and I got a second win due to that just happening. Again, thank you Phoenix for all your gracious support. With them, it helped me out of that mental rut much faster than I anticipated. With their assistance, I now had a third party that held me accountable. In order for them to work for me, I needed to make content and get it to them in a timely manner. Yet, through the month, I still questioned my channel's deer trail path of content. I hadn't fully grasped my why yet. Why was I still pioneering ahead on this path and so stubbornly refused to give it up? Like the thought of picking one or the other, gaming or art, felt like nails on the chalkboard to me. I started to rationalize, it's just how I operate. My attention span isn't the greatest, sometimes my ADD would insist on making a different series while my OCD demanded I needed to see something through till the end from start to finish when it comes to gaming, whereas with my art it was a nice change of pace for me. I like opening up conversations about topics I am passionate about or have some thought on and enjoy sharing those thoughts with you all. My speed draws felt more meaningful, whereas my gaming felt more enjoyable and fun. There was a connection there. I just couldn't grasp what it was. Gaming is dear to me ever since I was a child. I remember on rainy, stormy days when my siblings and I couldn't play outside, we played inside. However, every once in a while there was this magical moment in the house where one of my older siblings would come rushing to the stairs of the basement where we typically like to play and call down, Mom's playing the Super Nintendo! Immediately thereafter, I would stop what I was doing and hastily scamper up those stairs of falling death and tripping dismay, just so I could snatch a seat in the upstairs living room to gather around the TV's glow to watch my mom on the main stage, controller in hand, ready to start. Anytime she played, it was like watching an interactive movie. Every session had its own fun to gut-wrenching experience seeing the player progress through the game. I remember as a kid watching and silently wishing for my mom to make it, to overcome the level's hardships and move on to the next one. There was this childlike innocent belief that by being there, by watching, my silent wishes were helping them through the game that I somehow helped them beat it. 
Even when the mantle was passed on to my brother or my sister who played and only did so by asking mom because that was her console and we needed permission as well as all of our chores, homework, etc. done in order to have the glorious controller in our hands. That feeling of magic was still the same from watching to playing. It didn't matter which role I was in. That level of wonder and enchantment had a hold of me the moment the TV switched over to the console. We were connected, even if only one or two held the controller. And such a genuine feeling created a staple in my life that anytime it rains or storms and I'm inside listening to it, I think back on those fun afternoons and evenings we all huddled around to watch Player One. Gaming really was about the journey for me and inspired a separate but still connected journey of my art. Why was it that whenever I voiced topics I held passion for in my speed draws, showcasing my art up on screen in the background, it still retained the same level of mirth and whimsy I had like when I was a child gathered around the TV to watch one play. I didn't start asking myself these questions until this last June when I came across Akemi Nekomachi's channel. Watching this Indonesian VTuber's debut stream, there was a section they outlined goals for themselves and their channel. A few of those goals struck a chord with me, and I audibly said to myself, oh my god, I do that too. That's something I likewise strive for. It was a turning point where I no longer began to view YouTube and other channels as competition or rivals, but as fellow creators in arms that have like minds and strive for much of the same thing. A whole new level of camaraderie had been opened up to me I didn't think of before. Realizing this lit a fire in me that made me come to terms about my channel, its content, and myself. So, why video games and art? Because I feel it carries the same energy like you're gathering around the campfire with close friends or family. Instead of an actual fire, your screens are what create the glow. Whatever you're watching this on, I want to bring that level of inclusiveness, that wholesome feeling I had as a kid watching my mom and older siblings play to this platform. There is a level of community in both kinds of content that are connected. People gather around to be entertained, like someone pulled out a guitar and everyone started singing songs. Or you gather because there's a story to tell, an experience you wish to share, a talent you want to show or voice. I had finally discovered my why. And with it, I also realized that this channel isn't going to be a mainstream favorite. The algorithm most likely won't pick up my content and suggest it to the masses, and being able to accept this? I've come to peace with that possibility. The reasons I've started my channel are very different to the why I have continued, why I chose to persevere. A year ago today, I remember the confusion being hung up on the numbers, feeling like my worth equated to the work I produced, cranking out content I enjoy doing, but not having a firm understanding of why I wanted to do it. My numbers may not have grown as much from last year till now, but I have, and I've never been more proud of myself to keep on going. I love this channel the work that I do, and the community I've created, regardless of the numbers. So thank you, everybody, so much for watching. I appreciate you being here, gathered around the glow of your screens like I once was as a child, carrying on a personal tradition that's now modernized and globalized for all to be a part of. My magenta knights, my enthusiasts, Continue to remember to be awesome. Be you. Akemi. Out.